This episode of the Lead Machine Growth Show is brought to you by Lead Machine, the step-by-step tech easy system for getting leads online. Are you ready to start attracting your ideal audience right away? Join the five-day Lead Magnet Magic Challenge today at www.getleadmachine.com forward slash magic. Say goodbye forever to struggling with lead magnets and say hello to getting your offer seen by your ideal clients. Welcome to the Lead Machine Growth Show, where you will discover how to tackle your tech, master your message, and design your dream. Paul Guyen, the mastermind behind the Lead Machine, introduces you to trailblazers who inspire you to implement life-changing solutions and systems you can model to nurture your leads and get your offers seen by your ideal clients who will invest in themselves and you. Be sure you visit our website at www.leadmachinegrowthshow.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, tune in and get ready to transform your vision into reality. Welcome to the Lead Machine Growth Show. Have you ever wondered how you can get more eyeballs on your offers and your lead magnets? Today, we're going to be discussing boosting and leveraging your authority as a podcast guest. We're going to learn how to update your social profiles, distribute podcast interviews, which I'm particularly interested in that as a host as well as a guest, and create authority boosting content to get more leads. So welcome again to the Lead Machine Growth Show, where passion meets entrepreneurship and dreams become reality. I'm Paul Guy, and your Lead Machine coach, host and international best-selling author and tech and marketing nut. And I'm dedicated to helping entrepreneurs, coaches, and solo entrepreneurs tackle their tech, master their message, and design their dream. So are you ready to unleash your full potential and achieve those extraordinary results we're chasing? Then you're in the right place. So we'll dive deep into strategies, insights, and stories of trailblazers who've overcome the obstacles of technology, marketing, and mindset, and are making a huge impact on their audiences and customers. So Buckle up and get ready for an exhilarating ride filled with inspiration, motivation, and practical advice. Whether you're just starting out or looking to take your business to the next level, let's get this conversation started and turn your dreams into reality. So our guest today, uh, we're going to be sharing her thoughts on how to update your social profiles and website that will boost authority and open up more opportunities, which I know that you're all interested in. I'm certainly interested in that how to publish and distribute your podcast guest interviews to increase visibility and leads, two steps of the podcast, hint, hint, podcast guest leverage system, and how to leverage the episodes to create authority boosting content without overwhelm. So let me just cover some of the highlights of Lindsay Phillips, our guest today. She's the CEO of Smooth Sailing Growth and Smooth Business Podcasting. That's a nautical theme there. You must be a boater. (laughs) I'm not, but... (laughs) (laughs) But smooth sailing is a metaphor for smooth sailing uh, through the content marketing and podcast domain, if you will. She's the host of the Leverage Your Podcast show and creator of the podcast Leverage System. Uh, She's been featured on MSN, NBC, and Fox, published in Huffington Post, Daily Business Post, and go solo guesting on podcasts like John Lee Dumas's Entrepreneurs on Fire. Wow and Joe Farrell's best podcast ever. And she shared her expertise at events at Jim Palmer's Dream Business Academy, PodFest. And in, I'm going to ask you about this. Uh, included in the Guinness World Records, what's that? Um, we'll so PodFest it. had a, um, they were going into the Guinness World Records with their PodFest virtual um, conference for the most amount of people that were uh, attending. And yeah, so I was a guest speaker. So I got to be involved in that. It was kind of cool. Wow. Okay. She loves helping entrepreneurs building their authority and increase their visibility through the power of podcasting with her full service podcasting and content uh, marketing services. And I know I've been following Lindsay for a while. I've actually taken some of her training and I think she's awesome. And I'm really so excited to have her, have you here today. Uh, Let's welcome Lindsay Phillips. Thanks Come for having down. me, Paul. Nice to finally Come meet on you. Down. Woo-hoo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, thanks again for coming. Uh, 
how can we showcase our, ourselves better as a guest expert? I know you teach a lot about podcast hosting, mm-hmm. and that's that's a lot of the, but part of that is guesting, and you, and you teach people the guesting part of it too. And my my clients and my listeners are uh, maybe they're not quite ready to be a podcast host, right? But they certainly want that visibility, and I know this is a really good way of doing it. So tell us about becoming a go to authority as a guest. Yeah, it's funny. It's a lot of people will guest on a podcast, but they almost rely on the host to kind of push out that exposure and the visibility. Mm-hmm. But you mm-hmm. actually have control as well as to how that is being disseminated or how you're leveraging it. And I'll give a couple of examples. Um, so let's say your LinkedIn profile, for example. In your image that you have there, you can even put like guest expert on and let's say one of the really, uh, if you were on a high profile podcast, um, then you could just have that featured on the image, but also in your bio or your links um, in that description section, you can say that you are a guest speaker because that it doesn't count as speaking. So speaking guest expert on podcasts, you know, I was guest expert on 50 podcasts, whatever that may be. So that when other people or other podcast hosts are looking at your profile, they automatically see, oh, they've guested on podcasts before. So they're more likely to get invited to other opportunities when um, the host sees them already as a guest expert, they've been there, done that, that, you know, they're comfortable on camera and so forth. Um, Mm -hmm. Another opportunity that is often missed just within the LinkedIn profile alone is that section called featured. So you can feature um, a blog post on your website, a podcast episode you were on um, Mm -hmm. and it has like the image and it links to your website Or you can even do like a LinkedIn article that showcases one of the, um, you know, shows that you were on. So again, when someone's going through your profile, they're automatically going to see that you were a guest expert on a show. They can even like listen to it, link to it. It just um, puts your credibility and your authority kind of like more front and center. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about the featured section. Of course, you can do an article. When um, when I share share uh, an episode with one of my guests, I give I give them uh, swipe files and images and some sample sample copy that they can use. And some of them take advantage of it. Some of them don't. Yeah. Some are really good at it. Some of them aren't. But that's a missed opportunity. Oh, huge. If you if you don't if you don't and it. And it helps both you. It helps your helps the show, and it mm. helps you to gain credibility. So Absolutely. A, and I, I guess not taking a, a advantage of the, of that, and not uh, promoting what where have you've been, what shows you've been on is a is a huge mistake. But what are some of the what are some of the other mistakes that uh, entrepreneurs are making? Yeah. Guesting. The biggest one, Paul, is not publishing those episodes on your own website. So for instance, I'm obviously on your show. So I'm going to take your show notes. Sometimes I even write my own show notes for that episode. If the host doesn't have a lengthy set and I will publish it as a blog post, I happen to put it in my podcast category. Um, and I'll have the show notes and I will, um, sometimes I embed the audio. Sometimes I embed the YouTube video. If it's Mm -hmm. there, um, link to the host site, obviously, and their iTunes and so forth. So it's great for the host because they've got backlinks. Yeah. But it, um, but A, I'm showcasing, it's my content, right? It's like, I'm the one that I'm talking and sharing tips or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So that's on my site. So people can see if they go to my site that, um, I, I speak, I'm on guests, I'm an expert on this, why, you know, X, Y, and Z, but they can also digest and engage in the content and the knowledge that I'm sharing. Um, and then also I'm using that 
when I'm sharing the episode on social media. So I'm pushing mm. trap, using it to push traffic to my own site that again, I've got call to actions within that post. I've got, you know, my affiliates or my own lead magnets and I'll put them in there. And then of course, on the sidebar of my posts, I have my call to actions um, as well. So it's just another way of leveraging that content to be able to showcase myself as an expert, but then also um, uh, attract and convert leads. Right. And so as a guest, you've, you've got to have a funnel. You've got to have, you've got to think about, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get traffic from this. Yeah. I'm going to get people visiting. So I've got to have lead magnets. I've got to have my, my blog set up so that I can embed that. Mm-hmm. And uh, like, like we were talking before, I'm an implementer. So I want to know these little detailed steps. Yeah. So, uh, and I think other people too, they, they, they don't know where to begin uh, doing that. So when you, uh, you talk about the show notes and, uh, publishing an X, an episode, um, so not as a host, but as a guest, Mm -hmm. what does that, what does that involve? So you can go a few ways. Um, again, I take, if the host has great show notes on their page, I will simply, you know, take those and put them on my own. Um, sometimes I've used AI to run the audio and grab those show notes, or I've even simply, let's say, I know the topic is about my podcast leverage system. I know what the four steps are. And obviously I was part of the conversation. So I remember what it is. So I can (laughs) just write a summary and then bullets of things that we've covered, um, or things that you would take away from the episode and that you'll learn which doesn't take that long to do and just type that out bullets and so forth. And then I'll obviously put information about the, the show I was on links to that. Um, my own call to action in there. Um, Mm -hmm. sometimes I'll even add an image of something that I'm an affiliate for that may relate. Um, so I can kind of take advantage of some affiliate sales within there. Um, I'll either use the image that the host shares, or I will create an image of my own if it's not quite the right size, or I create one that's branded to me, showing that I was a featured guest on like your show type thing. So again, it's my branding, but I'm showing that, hey, this person chose me as a guest expert. I was featured. And again, it just kind of like up levels your authority to say that you're a guest expert on a show. And so I'll use that image um, as a featured image within that blog post as well. Okay. So let's step back a minute. When you said AI, audio, transcribe, show notes, let's talk about that for a minute. What kind of tools do you're using and and how do you, how do you approach that? Because this can be time consuming to, uh, to, to, to go through and listen to it. Who has time to listen to what I was already there. So you should be able to take notes while you're doing it. You're covering a topic that you know, Mm -hmm. uh, but there's always in there. I'm surprised when I, when I do a transcript, I'm surprised uh, with the quotes that were, that were done, that were made like, or the, or the key, key topics. And like, we're kind of going off. And uh, when you go off on a tangent, a lot of times there's gold in those tangents and like, did you ever think of this? And then, Oh, well, there's that aha moment. So what kind of tools do you use uh, for that? What AI will read in in, in your uh, audio and um, transcribe it? And how does just yeah just that part, part of it work? Process. I know because yeah. it's still so new, right? Um, yeah. I do have a team that they actually listen and write show notes, so I have that as well. I've mm-hmm. been dabbling with some of the AI. Some I like. Some I find it focuses on not the core of the interview. It focuses on like other extraneous stuff or like something that was mentioned during the intro. It focuses on that. So it's like the yeah. show notes don't really work because it's focusing on the wrong things. Yeah. Um, I've used pod flow, um, pod squeeze, cast magic, cap show. Um, I mean, there's so many different ones out there. Some people use the chat GTP, whatever, um, like natively, I don't know how they do that with audio, but, um, and again, like some, I like some, I don't, I always edit them and like 
give it my voice because sometimes they're like the language is just not something I would say. It's like, I don't know. It's just like, which I wouldn't use. So I always edit it, review it. You have to humanize it. You can't just copy and paste. And, and that's the way it is. And I'll massage it and move things around. I do love that it generates timestamps. Yeah. And when you put those on show notes, people can actually click that timestamp and then jump to that spot. So it's like, Ooh, I want to know that nugget. So then they'll click and it fast forward to that spot in the episode. So it, it makes the episode a little bit more, um, engaging. Um, but you do have to have the audio embedded on your post in order for that to work, obviously. Um, and yeah, like you said, some, some of them will pull out, uh, quotes, but sometimes they pull out like, some rando sentence and I'm like, that's not a quote. (laughs) So it's, it's kind of hit and miss. Um, you know, it, it does speed up the process of creating those content assets, but it's not the be all and end all in my opinion. Right. And I would agree. I I use a number of tools. I do use chat GPT, uh, uh, quite a bit for, um, for my clients as well as for my own stuff, uh, which is, is fun. I just enjoyed learning, learning how to Mm. do that. Um, but I use Bard. Bard will read in files. You can give Bard. Bard is Google's uh, chat box. Oh, okay. And it, it actually, you can give it a link to your Dropbox of your audio, and you and or your or maybe you have a transcript, and you want you've already gotten a transcript. Yeah. So you just you give the Dropbox link and say it's a Word doc. It's eight thousand or eighty eighty three thousand two hundred and forty six words. It's a uh, you know a, a Word doc and. Uh, Pull out the key highlights, quotes, concepts, and here's here are the speakers. You know, you prompt this, and you you in, you built into your prompt, uh, giving it enough information so it can pull out the the results that you want. Yeah, and uh, a lot of times that won't quite work. So you, it's a a chat bot is a conversation that you're having. Yeah, with yeah. Chat. So so lately I've been using Descript.com. Yep. Uh, which is yeah. which which is really great at uh, at the transcript. Uh, I don't use it for editing videos because I use Tam- Camtasia to edit the audio and the videos and put everything together. Uh, so I don't use that part of it. But I've been you know fooling around with with audiograms and things like that. But the uh, Bard is is great at, at reading those those uh, things in and it does an okay job of the summary. I prefer what Chat GPT will do with it, so I might mm. use both of them. Uh, but then I'll take it, and I I'm a I, I love Grammarly, and I use I do a lot of writing, and uh, so I use Grammarly, and I fine tune it to be casual, informal audience. Yeah, and I I can I can change the tone, and and massage it to where it sounds more like me, and it's like yeah, I wouldn't use unleash the potential of your affiliate program with publishing this episode. I wouldn't use that I kind know. of language. I said hey, just do this and this and that, and your goal. Uh, so you've got, like you said, every person I've talked to and uh, who have I been studying and following says the same thing. Yeah. You've got to, you got to humanize what, you, what comes out of the chat bot. So, um, well, thanks for that. I'm glad that, uh, I like the idea of the timestamps. I, I haven't been doing mm-hmm. that because of the effort, effort it takes to, uh, to, to pull all that out. But uh, now with some of the automation, I'm experimenting with Capshell right now, uh, and it does do that. Yeah. But then it's it's a bit, it's a bit verbose for me, and uh, so I'm just just started playing with that. So, yeah, it's uh, good to try out different tools because what what you know someone raves about they love this style or you know some people prefer this style. So it's like yeah, I've been I just tried Cast Magic for the first time today. Um, yeah. It could have been the episode, but it came out kind of weird um but it has the ability to like add more prompts so maybe i just need to like change some of the prompts to to rejig it but um it it takes some finagling it's a bit of a learning curve <laughs> yeah one of my guests uh, denise wakeman who you might want to get on your show by the way uh she has the she and andy o'brien founded the um, ai success club Ooh. you might want to you might want to check her out. She was yeah. they were both guests on my podcast. Um, but what was I going to say? Oh, the the humanization part of it she was talking about. Yeah. And um, I forgot what my tra- train of thought was. So anyways, 
check those people out because you might want to get them on your show. Um, We talked about the podcast leverage system. What are the four steps of that system and how can a podcast guest leverage that when you know they do have control, but they don't have ultimate mm-hmm. control. So there, there are some things yeah. that are in, some things that are out as far as what I can accomplish as a as a guest. For sure. I mean, don't be afraid to ask for the raw video and say, "Hey, I'd love to make some video clips. I'd love to put it on my YouTube." I mean, really, what there's there's no. It's all benefit, right, for the host to have that content yeah. out there and promote their podcast. So don't be afraid to ask for the recording after like after the fact. Um, so going to the leverage system, we already covered the first one, which is publishing again, publishing it on your website. Mm-hmm. The second one is distributing for maximum exposure. So making sure that you're taking advantage of all the avenues to share. So obviously the social media platforms that you use, if you do have the video, put it up in YouTube. If you have the video and you're creating reels or video snippets, then you can, you know, use those YouTube shorts, reels and so forth. But even like LinkedIn, you know, there are LinkedIn articles. You can create that newsletter that people actually subscribe to. And funnily enough, um, a lot of people don't think to email their list Mm -hmm. when an episode is live. I'm like, that's crazy. (laughs) You're serving the audience. You're, you're giving them, you know, tips Um, and the approach that I prefer to go instead of emailing and say, Hey, I just went live on this show, you know, take a listen is actually share a tip or a quote or some, a a nugget that was from that episode. And just so that they can skim it and get that little takeaway. And Mm -hmm. then it's like, Hey, I also covered this, 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 and this in the episode click, you know, here and go take a listen on my show page. So you want to, yeah, the step two is to distribute. Yeah. And and then on all those channels, what you pointed out isn't just for your email list. It's for, for all of those channels. You, mm-hmm. you want to tease people with, with what you, what you did or what was, uh, what you talked about. There's a lot of things that might be in the show notes uh, or might be not be in the show notes or might not be in the description mm-hmm. that would be of interest or that, you know, you know, we talked about this, this little thing and we went off on the side and that was really cool when we did that. So you're only, you're going to know about that unless you have a team or unless you've really, really fresh uh, fleshed out that episode. Yeah. And I have some clients that um, <clears throat> they have their own shows and they would prefer to only promote their podcast and their show. So they don't necessarily, um, promote the episodes that they guessed it on. And I'm like, I I just don't understand that. Cause I'm like, Hey, it's, it's your expertise that is being showcased. And if I'm on someone's feed and I see all the time, like, Oh, they were a guest on this show. Oh, they were a guest on this show. My automatic view is like, Ooh, they're like hot. They're like the go-to expert on whatever that topic is. Everyone wants them. Everyone wants that person to be a guest on their show. I'm more likely to look at them because I see them as an authority and they have more credibility. Um, So it's just kind of like that whole viewpoint that entrepreneurs and prospects have, um, which I think is really important and shouldn't be overlooked. Good point. Continuing with number three. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Um, So three and four kind of like tie together. Um, The third one is to repurpose for higher, higher visibility. So, and I'll give a couple of examples. So let's say I'm obviously on your show right now, but some of the points that I brought up in the episode, I could easily go do a two minute little video or a separate reel sharing that point saying, Hey, I shared this thing, whatever, um, on, um, you know, your, the show, um, blah, 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 and like do that little video. So you're taking that pieces of that long form content and using it in other ways. And it's not like people are going to be like, didn't she share that on another podcast? It's like, they don't remember. They just process the nugget that you, that you share. Um, you could even take the topic and create um, your own video about a condensed version of it, or you could write a mm-hmm. whole blog post on the topic. So you're just using that content in different ways 
to create more content. Don't feel that just because you shared that one topic on this person's show that you can't use it again in other ways. Um, And people need to see things over and over and over again. Um, And number four was like multiplying it for consistent content. So it kind of goes slightly in the same vein. It's like, okay, in this episode, clearly I share, you know, four steps of the podcast leverage system. I could go ahead and create a quote graphic that only shared a tip to do with, you know, publishing your guest episodes. Um, So I'm taking one nugget out of it. It stands alone by itself and I can create a quote graphic or I can can create a social media post, even asking people like a poll, Hey, how many people guess on a podcast? What percentage of you actually publish it on your website. You know, do you do this? Do you do this? Do you do this? And then you've got your poll or just simply asking a question about that content. So it's just another way of like pulling pieces out or twisting it to share more consumable content and taking video. Like if you use the video, creating little video clips, creating reels, um, creating YouTube shorts that are 60 seconds or less. So there's, it's just like, taking, I call them snackable bites, but like taking all those little pieces out. Um, so that you're not killing yourself trying to figure out what the heck you're going to post next week. And that's brilliant. The, the whole idea of repurposing when you create a piece of content and this, this, this show, this episode is, is a piece of content. Hmm. You should always be thinking of how, how, what are the other ways that I can use it? And a lot of times people just need those examples to say, Oh, I didn't, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, I think it though. There's there's thir- there's 33 ways that I can reuse this content with, and it's only one time I, I appeared on the show, or only one blog yeah. post, or whatever whatever it is. Uh, you can you can take and pull it and and make little like you say snackable bites out of it to uh, to just give it more life, to give it more yeah. shelf li- life. Because you can go if you get a good good episode and you you know that people are are engaging with it and they like it you can share it again and again and again and totally. again over over time and and uh Denise Griffiths was one of my guests and she was talking about when she um when she interviewed Larry Wingett mm. and and basically uh she said that that Larry Wingett saved her show cuz she was about to throw in the can because she wasn't getting any traction Aww. this is you know a million years ago yeah um when she first started out, but, um, she shares it. She reshares that episode, uh, every yeah. now and then, cause it was so good. And, 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 you know, it means a lot to her too. And I think her people know that too. Yeah. So, uh, but it was a good, great interview, but yeah, you can, you can use that. And once you create the content, it, it doesn't have to only live once. No. And I've got, it's funny. Cause, um, last year when I first started the show, I was doing audiograms, And I wasn't really into using the video clips. And I thought to myself, and now that YouTube shorts are a bigger thing and I'm like, I still have the video. So, and especially for my solo episodes, why don't I go back? I've got those timestamps. I've got the copy. So I'm getting my team to make the video clips of, of those. And again, that's like content from like a year ago, but I'm just going to pull it out and use it in a different way. Same with, I've got some episodes. Um, again, I'll probably do it more to the solo ones, but like, let's say I did an episode on my podcast guest leverage system. Obviously there's four steps. I could easily take that and now create a carousel. So now that carousels are getting more traction, I'm going to go back in the archives, find those episodes. Some of them lend itself to carousels more so than others. If you have like the three myths or the five ways you can blah, blah, blah. Or like, you know, if you're publishing, you need these four things. So you just kind of have to like put your brain in a way of like, okay, what has steps? What has a number of things? So then I can easily create a carousel and then put that in LinkedIn and Facebook and and Instagram. And again, the beauty of those carousels is that that last slide typically will have some sort of call to action of like opting in for, you know, an assessment or an audit, uh, whatever the free thing is. Um, so yeah, so don't be afraid to go back into the archives to rejig and get new content. Right. And, and that's exactly how we get leads from all of this activity. It's not just from your appearance on this one show. Uh, cause 
that's that's one and done. But the whole the whole magnifying the multiply for the multiply and the repurposing of content with a call to action, and then se either sending them back to a landing page or to to the blog post that you wrote with the uh, you know with your, your lead magnets in the sidebar and and those things. That's how you get. That's how yeah. you monetize. That's how you monetize this. So yeah. how how else? Uh, what what other tricks or tips that can you uh, can you lay on us about getting leads from those interviews and that content? Another good way is seeding. So um, you know, if, if again we're talking about the podcast guest leverage system, I do have a podcast guest audit so people can get audited. So I review everything that they do once they guest on a podcast episode and give suggestions. Um, so mm. like, for instance, right now, I didn't give the link. I didn't say, go get this, go do this. I'm just seeding something that I have and a process that I have that will pique someone's interest. So if you're a coach, let's say, and you're guesting on an episode, you can say, oh, um, you know, in my whatever, whatever mastermind, I taught one of my clients my four step something system and she was able to do this and then do that. So you're sharing like a case study scenario of a result, but you're seeding a, a process that you've done, a proven result, and you're also seeding um, a, the program that you have. So if someone's listening, they're they're like, ooh, I'd like that result. Oh, they've got a mastermind? Mm, let me search that up. So just by seeding it and dropping in those stories, you're able to pique that curiosity to convert a prospect. Yeah, and I think the idea of it, I was thinking about, okay, some people I you it's so obvious that they're seeding and it's it's off-putting. So I think you when you said stories, I I said, okay, I wrote that down. How do you make them not off-putting? And yeah. I think you just nailed it is by telling that that you have a mastermind, and I do have a mastermind, and I yeah. teach people this. Yeah. Uh, Lead, how to do lead magnets, but how do you make it so that it, it's not so obvious, but yeah. yet compelling? Yeah. Even just sharing like examples. It's like, oh, you know, I, I talk about, I talk about, I don't know, this thing or how to improve your messaging in my whatever mastermind. And a lot of my um, clients had these questions and one of them was this you know, I know it's a common question. So even just setting, like, again, you're just sharing an example, a story of where that question came up instead of just saying like, oh, I get this common question, but you're saying, oh, one of my clients in this mastermind program, when I was talking about my messaging pro system, um, this question came up over and over and over again. So I want to, you know, share this tip with you. Obviously I deep dive and share the full template, the swipe files, the process in my program, but I want to share this nugget of information with you here. So it's kind of like, you know, you're getting a taste, but you can get more in my mastermind program without being salesy. <laughs> right. Okay. I love it. So in my mastermind group, in my private, with my private coaching uh, clients, uh, one, one of my, uh, one of them is is struggling a little bit to to get traction in the niche that she wants because it's uh, she's a health coach, but she specializes in a very specific autoimmune um, disease. Yeah, and uh, so she's how how would she find shows and hosts to approach to get on their shows? Um, so that's where it's like you really have to understand your avatar. You really have to know what they're listening to. What are they searching? What are their pain points that they're looking for or coming up with? So let's say again, some autoimmune disorder of some kind, and it affects, I don't know, hair loss. I'm just making this up, obviously. Well, it, and, it affects sleep. sleep. Okay. There you go. They're, they're so exhausted. it's like, yeah. So anything to do with like sleep deprivation, stress from sleep, um, you know, anger issues and like arguing like your relationships because of lack of sleep, like all of those little symptoms and pain points, someone might be searching like, oh my God, I need help with this. 
And so it's yeah. like, think about, okay, maybe they're going, maybe they're listening to sleep meditation podcasts. Maybe they're listening to um, like wellness or like morning night routines or so thinking about those podcasts that kind of cover those um, things that like work-life balance. So that where that topic would match that podcast and it's you're, you know, going to that niche, if you will. So it's just really right. kind of like um, doing a brain dump of like all of those symptoms, all of those things that your avatar are searching up, where are they going to get help? You know, what YouTube videos, what video shows, what podcasts would they possibly be interested in to help make their lives better? Mm -hmm. And then you can, and using those keywords as well, it helps. So even if you search within iTunes or whatever app you have, you could search up, um, actually, even if you go to, uh, YouTube, but then there's also some apps where you can search on a more granular level, um, verbal V U R B L and audia. Um, and if you put in a search, it not only just gives you, it doesn't just give you a podcast about sleep. It'll give you the podcast episodes about sleep. So then you could see, okay, what was the podcast that hosted that? Is that a fit? Like, would that make sense for me to be on their podcast? Would they be my target market? Um, yeah. yeah so you can kind of like reverse engineer kind of. Yeah. And so you said, um, iTunes, YouTube, what was the verb? What was it? Verbal? Uh, V-U-R-B-L. Okay. And then the other one was Audia. A-U. Uh, Audia. I'm going to have to search it now. A-U-D-I-A. I honestly can't remember how you spell it right now. But they yeah. are, it's almost like a mashup between a podcast player and YouTube. It like has a different search functionality. Well, Spotify would probably have something too, wouldn't it? I don't think you can search for like, if you search, um, that you need help with, I don't know, better skin, or, like you're going to get a podcast about skin, but you're not necessarily going to get search results that are episodes about that yeah. topic. Yeah. Yeah. So there's gotta be other, other, um, podcast directories that you can search. Totally. And, yeah. Yeah. And you can even that's... Google like the best podcasts about sleep. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm sure there are podcasts about everything. <laughs> yeah. So there is yeah, no there doubt are. that you would be able to find directories. It's like, you just have to refine your, your searching, but, and then even going into like those apps, like Podmatch, Guestio, a pitch DB, um, I'm sure mm -hmm. you can put in search functionality to find those shows that are within those um, guest matching apps. Yeah, and there are guest mo uh, matching services also. Yeah. You know, interview connections is one exactly. of them. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I knew, I, I met, um, I was at Jim Palmer's uh, Dream Biz Academy, one of his first ones in, in Vegas. And I was like running the audio and operations there. Awesome. And, and, uh, that was when Jessica Rhodes had, was just starting. Yeah, She was, she was, she was booking podcasts for Jim, um, booking him on shows and booking guests for his show. Yeah, And, uh, that's where she just took off. She, she gave a talk that day and, uh, and it was like one of her first times out, uh, and she was great, but, uh, yeah, she's just skyrocketed from there and she's that got she that interview sure. connections and. And she's she's doing great. So there are podcast uh, agencies that will mm -hmm. that will get you on shows, and they yeah. can match you up. Of course, there's, a, there's you know they want to charge you a monthly fee and all that. So there's there's a bit of an investment. So do your own own research before you you know to get your mm -hmm. feet wet and and get started. So another question I had was, and we we kind of touched on this, but what kind of topics should I have ready to go so that I can so when I ask uh, when I approach a, a host, uh, mm -hmm. how can I get on that show and you know, make increase the odds of them saying yes? I, obviously, knowing knowing their audience helps. But what what else? Yeah. Um, 
there's a few things. One, it's a good idea, obviously, to you need a one sheet where it gives the information about yourself, credibility. If you've got a book, if you've been on whatever shows, um, your social links, and then also topics and questions. Um, and then I go one step further and have some people call it a media page. Some people call it a press page, but it's just like a link that has the bio about you click they can open up an image, um, your headshot, your one sheet, and you can even showcase underneath places that you've spoken at shows that you've guested on also. So when people go to your website, they'll see, Ooh, they're a speaker, they're a guest on podcasts. So it kind of has that dual functionality and it's just an easy link to give people. Um, but when it comes to the topics and the questions, Um, you really almost need to reverse engineer what your, um, your high, your, your offer is like, what is your goal of your business? So if you are a coach and you have a mastermind and then let's say the mid tier is like a course, and then like, what are your lead magnets that lead into that funnel? And so you need to have, you can do it one of two ways. You need to have, um, a topic that is sexy and solves a small problem. And then the natural next step would be to get that lead magnet. So you do need to have lead magnets that are a good segue between one thing and another. Like obviously today I'm talking about my podcast leverage system and I do have a training on that. So it just kind of is a natural next segue. Um, Mm -hmm. So you want to think about, yeah, what your lead magnets are and how you want that customer journey to go. Now your topics I think they're better when they're very specific. So Mm -hmm. if you have a method, um, uh, a a process, a system, it's, that's an easy topic, right? Um, Or you could, again, like the four ways you can blah, 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 Uh, the three things to avoid when you want this. So instead of like, oh, my topic is about podcast guesting that's yeah. super vague and it's not like the host can't envision what the talk is about and it's just like man been there done that everyone's you know said what they need to say so you just be super specific and then give the host the questions that they can ask as a guideline so that they know exactly you know how the topic is structured and plus i don't know if this has happened to you but um If you guest on a show and sometimes you've got like, okay, I've got three topics and then there's like seven questions that someone can ask, but they're like a mix. They kind of relate to this topic, this topic. There's one question that relates to this. And then there's some that are just like random. And so the host defaults to all those questions. So then that interview is kind of going to be this like mosh pit. (laughs) <laughs> of all these random questions about your journey, about entrepreneurship, about mindset, about your program. So you're really not able to showcase your expertise, the tips and the giveaways, because the host is not equipped and doesn't know what to ask, doesn't know what to expect from that episode. So you really need to set that host up and it guides the conversation that sets you up for success. And also have stories in mind that you can share to illustrate some of those points and seed your programs. So it does take a little bit of work up front, but it's it just makes the interview so much better. And it makes you more effective and and more more engaging as a guest. And when people mm-hmm. people see that you are on these other th- shows, and you know there, there's some structure to what you talked about, yeah. it just makes you more more. Um, what did we say in the beginning? Make, it, it, it amplifies your authority. Yeah. And so Lindsay um, set up this show just like that. She said, five ways to leverage your podcast guest interviews and get more leads. So that's the title of this episode. And uh, she gave me five questions that support that and deliver that. And I made sure I answered those questions. And I asked questions that were um, that were of interest to me. Of course, mm-hmm. I, I'm inter- the, the implementer. And um, so she's answered those questions and she set it up just how she said though. So that, that an example of, of that, how she's done that. Yeah. Perfectly. So well done. So we talked about how to make money. 
uh, with with um, having effective call to actions, uh, free gifts that lead into your programs. We talked about uh, promoting your episode as a guest. We've talked about um, the um, four step podcast leverage system. We talked about some cool tools, which I'm going to check out when we get off of here, and uh, some of the mistakes. And uh, I like the idea of the uh, LinkedIn profile and just kind of highlighting where you've been and 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 uh, posting and publishing on these mm -hmm. uh, on where wherever you are active on those so, uh, those profiles. Obviously, you, you're not going to post somewhere you're not going to exactly. be active because it's it's not effective. But um, as we wrap up, Lindsay, um, I'm interested in knowing what are th uh, with your final words today. Um, what are three things our listeners can do to put these ideas into action and get and get on these shows that they're looking for and uh, and start to amplify their authority? Yeah, three quick takeaways and then easily uh, implementable um, steps for them to take is one is you may have your one sheet already if you're guesting, I imagine. So set up that web page that has your bio, your images, topics, uh, questions, examples of shows that you've been on, um, because that's just an easy visibility thing that people can go to. And it's super easy to do. The second would be to review your LinkedIn profile, but even your other social media profiles. Does it say that you are a guest expert on podcasts about XYZ? Does it share a couple of key um, shows that you've been on? And does it share any examples? Because that's a super easy thing to do. And um, the third is just making sure that you are publishing those episodes that you're guesting on. Um, you know, put it on your website as a blog post and um, include the video, the audio links and, and create those show notes. It doesn't have to be super, super complicated. Um, there are, you know, just don't envision it as this big, huge, you know, ordeal. Um, it can be super simple. Right. And it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to all be immediate. It helps if you promote when the, when the host is promoting just to get that initial spike of, mm -hmm. of interest. But you can use this over and over again over time, and um, you can use it to amplify your authority on your yeah. website and all kinds of different places. And um, so you could, and don't be afraid to ask the get the host for the assets you need. Yeah, if you want the, the raw video or the audio, totally, or, or images. And so, and also engage with the the host uh, on social media when they are sharing to uh, to so that you're exposed to their audience yeah. would be another, another tip Absolutely. That, uh, that could be very helpful. So thank you, Lindsay. Lindsay is offering uh, two free gifts today, the podcast guest leverage system training. And you can, you can get that at www.leverageyourpodcast.com forward slash free. And you can access the training that steps you through the whole system. Uh, there's a fillable worksheet and impl to implement the system. And uh, I really like the the Canva templates that you provided. I mean, I oh, took good. this training preparing for this uh, for this interview just to just to see what and her stuff is is high quality. And she follows up with email and helps you uh, gives you even more tips. So there's a lot of value there. Uh, and also the podcast guest audit. You can get that at uh, www.leverageyourpodcast.com forward slash guest audit. And this is where we're going to discover what you're doing right, maybe what you're doing mm. wrong, so you can stay on track, get suggestions to tweak, tweak your uh, optimizing your uh, your profiles, your opportunities, uh, other ways to use that content, which a lot of we talked about today, and uh, and what other opportunities you might be missing. Just you know, you, right? This is this might be new to you, completely new to you. And if you're listening to this, uh, take take action on these both of these uh, gifts because. Uh, if you want to amplify your authority, this is just a, yet another way to get people to your offers and your lead magnets. Yeah. And um, so, Lindsay, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, yeah, I think we're time. just scratching the surface uh, <laughs> of this. Um, we're going to maybe have to invite you back on to talk about podcast hosting and uh, just repurposing. And, and you know, we'll, we'll, we'll come up with some other uh, things that people are, are looking to find out. So as we sign off, remember, faith and action go hand in hand. So put the pedal to the metal. And until the next time on the Lead Machine Growth Show, I'm Paul Guyon.
So long for now. Thank you for tuning in to the Lead Machine Growth Show with Paul Guyon, where we show you how to tackle your tech, master your message, and design your dream so that you can transform your vision into reality. Remember to visit our website at www.leadmachinegrowthshow.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Lead Machine Growth Show. Thank you.